Welcome to your self-grading video. It's going to get long. It's probably going to be a long video. So, a um, lot to go over. Uh, first off, um, you want to go to my website, tinyurl.com backslash smithgeometry. Um, link in the, in the video. And then go to the top, AB Computer Science, click the performance task. Okay, so you're going to need two things. Um, one, you're going to need the survival guide open. And two, you're going to need this guy called the Create Performance Task Scoring Guide. So I have both those up. So I'm going to go with the survival guide first. Okay, that's not the survival guide. This is the survival guide. So at the bottom of the survival guide, I think it says this is on page what? Is it name page? Page 14. Okay, so starting on page 14, these are the guidelines. So you want to go through this first and make sure you have all this checked off. Okay, so video, what do you need checked off? Video runs continuously, less than 60 seconds, less than 30 megabytes, and it demonstrates one feature of your program. Written response for this. Identify the programming language, JavaScript, for all of you. Identify the purpose of the program, why did you make it, what does it do. Describe the features that are shown in the video and their connection to the purpose of the program. So, you know, whatever feature you're showing, you want to connect with the purpose, okay? So, if the purpose is to win the game, then one of the features is you should show is how you win the game. There may be audio commentary in your video. Um, I'm recommending don't do that. No audio, okay? All right, so that's prompt 2A. So this is the checklist. So first you check what you have, make sure you have it. Then you're going to go to the scoring guide. So here's the scoring guide for 2A, okay? Video and response, all right? So it has a, def a couple different parts. So let's get started. Okay, 2A, video demonstrates one feature that's running and identifies the purpose. So here's the decision rules, okay? I like to read through all of these, uh, but I really like to read that how you're not going to get a point if you do not submit a video. Obviously, no point. The video does not illustrate the feature mentioned in the response. So whatever you talk about, make sure it's in the video, okay? So make sure you respond to that. The video does not illustrate the running of the feature. Screenshot or storyboard are not acceptable and will not be credited. So basically, whatever feature you talk about, make sure you're showing it. Scoring notes. Purpose means the intended goal or objective of the program. Function means how the program works. Okay? So you need to know what's the intent of it, and then the function is how the program works. All right. So identify what it does and the purpose. All right. Uh, prompt 2B. We're going to get to that in a second. So this one tells you what to do for 2A. 2B. 2B, it says describe the incremental. That means small steps. Incremental just means little step and increments, right? The incremental and iterative. Iterative means you do something once, it doesn't work, you do it again, you do it again. Iteration is rep repetition, okay? So what did you do? What slow little steps did you do? What did you have to keep repeating in the development process of your program? Focus on two distinct points in your process. Describe the difficulties or opportunities you encountered and how are they resolved or incorporated. Okay, so basically you want to make sure that you have two outcomes and that you are going to go ahead and focus on a difficulty opportunity. So don't forget you're talking about the overall process. You should reference your development process as a whole, not just two points in time. Okay, um, but let's look at the checklist. All this is good to read. Response describes the overall development. So overall development, not just the two key points. So overall development and two key points. Indicates whether you completed the project independently or with a partner. Most of you are going to say independently, so you do have to mention that. Okay. Uh, first difficulty slash opportunity are the same, so I'm not going to go ahead and read both, but describe one difficulty encountered early, and then the other one's going to be later. Describe the source. Was it feedback, testing, or reflection? Most of you, it's probably going to come in testing, where you try it and it doesn't work. And you're like, what the heck? I need to go figure this out or reflection. Some of you might work on it one day and then come back and be like, you know what? I could do this way easier if I did it this way. That would be reflect. That'd be an example of reflection. So you would talk about that. And then indicate how it was incorporated, solved, including whether you wrote the code independently. I've had a couple of you come and get help from me. Okay. Um, so you can say that you got assistance. Don't use anybody's name. Okay. Just say, I got help with this code. Don't say, from my teacher or from another student, just say, I got help with this code 
from another person to help me figure it out. That's okay. It's nothing wrong. They just don't want names in there. They get weird about names. Don't put your name on anything when you submit it for the AP. Okay, so the same thing here, but this one should be a later. So you have two difficulties, you have two opportunities, you can have one of each. All right, let's look at the scoring guide. So for 2B, describe or outline steps used in an incremental and iterative development process. Okay, how do I not get the point? The response only includes a process for determining the program idea and does not address the development process. Okay, so coming up with the program idea is not the process of creating. So this is how I thought of making this game. That's not a development process. The response does not indicate iterative development. That means you didn't talk about how you tried this and then you tried it again and then you tried it again and you finally got it better. Refinement and revisions are not connected to feedback testing or reflection. Okay, so whenever you say you refined something, made it better, which is part of iteration, you should be talking about how it was corresponding to the feedback you got from another person, testing that you did, or reflection. And the response only describes the developments at two specific points. So that's how you're going to lose points. And in scoring notes, development processes are iterative and cyclical in nature, require students to reflect and improve on what they have created. Examples of iterative development will include reflection, revision, testing, refining, improvements based on feedback. So those are examples. Use them. All right? You're writing to these prompts. The incremental and iterative development process does not need to be a formal method, such as waterfall, top-down, bottom-down, agile. Okay, so it doesn't have to be a formal method. It could just be a little bit more free-for-all. Okay, so that's to B response, developing a program with a purpose. Um, and then, so this one's just about the overall development. And then this one's about the two specific opportunities or difficulties. Okay, so do not reward a point if only one opportunity is identified or it doesn't, it doesn't describe how the opportunities or difficulties were resolved. So if you just said, I had this problem, but then you don't talk about how you fixed it, you're not going to get the point. Okay, so those are to be. To be or not to be. Let's move on. Okay, 2C, capture and paste the program code that implements an algorithm with an oval in Mark III. So here you're going to paste your algorithm, but you don't need the oval around it, but you're going to actually paste that just straight into this. Um, and then later when you send the whole PDF, it'll have an oval around that. This code segment uh, must be an algorithm that you developed individually on your own. You must include two or more algorithms and must integrate mathematical or logical concepts to describe how each algorithm within your selected algorithm functions independently, as well in combination with others. Okay, good stuff up here to read, but let's go to our checkboard. You wrote it, so you have to write it. Includes uh, Response includes copy-pasted version of the code, so you should have a copy-paste of the main code and the two sub-algorithms with all of those around them. That's going to happen um, in the PDF version, but you can just right there. Response identifies the selected algorithm parent and the two included algorithms children. Okay, so when you're talking about it, you're going to talk about what those two are. Sorry, a little loud right now. I'm going to keep talking though. It's crazy because I'll we'll probably just count for 30 minutes. Uh, included algorithm one, it identifies the code for the algorithm, explains what it does independently and how the code works, and it uses mathematical or logical concepts. Algorithm two, Again, explains what it works, uses... Now, they all don't have to use a uh, mathematical or logical concept as long as one of them does. And then uh, selected algorithm. Clearly identifies the code for the selected algorithm, describes how the selected algorithm combines both, and explains how the selected algorithm helps achieve the overall purpose. So you're talking about, I made this thing, it uses these two, this is why it uses this, and this is why it's helpful for my program. Scoring guidelines. To be specifically identifies at least two program developments, difficulties, or, whoops, sorry, 2C, not 2D. All right. See, look at it, we're almost done. All right, it's a video, you can fast forward, whatever. I, I don't know if anyone watches these. Anyways, so I'm just gonna like have a dance party right in the middle of it. Okay, I'm done. My hair, I, get, I need a haircut. I have paint on my arm, I think, right there. That's paint. It's not like, it's not Corona. Okay, uh, so for applying algorithms, so uh, code segment, the selected code segment implements an algorithm, so whatever code you paste in, make sure it has an algorithm. Okay, so do not reward a point if the algorithm consists of a single instruction, meaning it doesn't have other stuff that it does. 
The code segment consists of the algorithm is not included in the written response section or not explicitly identified the program. So if you're not talking about it, the one that you pasted, the algorithm is not explicitly identified, the entire program is selected. So make sure you only paste the algorithm. <clears throat> algorithm or precise sequence of fun. So when we're talking about algorithm, we're talking about a function. Please get that through your head. It's a function that you created. Um, if you're using code.org with a block, it's that green box that you write the function of. And you write all the stuff in it, and then you call it later. But well, we want to see the defined function. Okay. And algorithms should make use of sequencing, selection, or iteration. Okay. Next, the response part. <clears throat> Selected code um, uses mathematical or logical theme. Mathematical and logical. Ex explain how the selected algorithm functions and describe what the selected algorithm does in relationship. So it has mathematical and it implements other algorithms. It explains, uh, you explain what the algorithm does and you describe, describe how the algorithm helps the whole program. How do you not win an award? The algorithm is only a single instruction. It consists solely of library calls, meaning you didn't create anything yourself. Uh, the language, the select algorithm does not include mathematical operators. That's how you lose point. The response only describes what the selected algorithm does without explaining it, so you don't describe what it does. The response does not address the purpose. So why is this purposeful for your program? Just explain that real quick, one sentence. Without this program, I wouldn't be able to generate the score correctly, or I wouldn't be able to figure out if they won. Uh, the code segment consists of the selected algorithm is not included in the response, and it's not explicitly identified in the program code. So you got to make sure you actually paste in the right algorithm. The algorithm is not explicitly identified. The entire program is selected as an algorithm. Okay, so you just threw on all the code. Don't do that. Okay? And then there's some scoring notes. It's a lot, but here we go. All right. Mathematical concepts include mathematical expressions using arithmetic operators and mathematical functions. So what's a mathematical concept? It's anything with a greater than, equal to, less than, plus sign, all that. Logical concepts include Boolean, algebra, and compound expressions, so we're talking about a loop. Iteration is the repetition of part of an algorithm until a condition is met for a specific number of times. So you can have iteration involved, that would be like a for loop or something like that, uh, or a while loop. A selection uses a Boolean condition in terms of which uh, two parts of an algorithm is used. Okay, again. Iteration is a repetition of part of an algorithm until condition is met. I feel like it already said that. Um, and it says that too. Okay, so you don't have to have a Boolean loop, but it says a mathematical or logical concept. Does that mean both? No, you need one or the other. All right, if you want to do both, do it. Okay, 2C. Applying the algorithm. All right, so <clears throat> selected code implements an algorithm that includes two or more algorithms. So the top is like, hey, does it do this? Now we want to make sure that they include two or more. And at least one of the included has to have a mathematical or logical. Okay? Uh, explain how one of the included algorithms functions independently. All right, so basically this is the part where you're talking about how you have a parent and then two children functions built inside. One of those children functions has to have at least a mathematical or logical concept, and you need to explain how one of the included algorithm functions independently. So what, what can it do by itself? So here's how you lose a point. The selected algorithm consists of a single instruction or consists of library calls, so make sure you're not doing that. Neither of the included algorithms nor the selected algorithms includes two or more algorithms with math. Basically, you don't have mathematical. The code segment consists of the algorithm is not included in the written response section. Okay, so that means you don't talk about it and it's not explicitly identified. It means you don't paste in the right part. Okay? If I were you, I'd put comments in it right above the main algorithm. I put comments, so forward slash, forward slash, forward slash, and then write main algorithm. And then right below it, do forward slash, forward slash, you know, child one algorithm, child two algorithm, and just paste that. Put it in order. Remember, on code.org, and the way that code works, you can put anything in any order you want. So you pick the logical flow. All right, that one was, I think, a lot more straightforward but, uh, than the first one. Here we go, 2D. 
2D or not 2D. This is where you talk about abstractions. So you're going to paste in your abstraction piece. Some of these might overlap, so you might use similar things over and over again. Uh, so here's here's what it is. You wrote all abstraction code yourself. It's not on an on event block, but a function you define in name. So you have to set. So you can you can write a function. Let me be clear about this. A lot of kids are confused. You can write a function called update score, and then you can put it on in on events consistently. Like you can put it on like 12 different on events because you have buttons that always update the score. That's fine. But the actually abstraction is the function you created. You just called it multiple times to help manage complexity. All right. Response includes the copy pasted version of the code, the rectangle around it. Uh, response identifies the abstraction by name, and you specifically describe how the abstraction manages complexity, i.e., by explaining how your code would be more complex to write or reason about without the abstraction. So let's go ahead and look at it. All right, 2D. All right, so the first part you're looking at the, how you were student developed, okay? So if it's not student developed, you're going to be done for. Um, the response is an existing abstraction such as variables, so you can't just do existing abstraction like, oh, I heard this. The code segment consists of abstraction is not included in the written response, which means you don't talk about it, or you don't paste the right thing. The following are examples of abstractions. Procedures, parameters, lists, application, libraries. Those would be good examples. I've stressed this a lot. If you can create a function with a parameter, you're golden. Lists and other collections can be treated as abstract data to develop programs, okay? So that would be good. We don't use the word procedures. So those are functions. Same thing. Okay? As long as you're using them right. If you create a function with a parameter, but you only call that parameter with one thing, say it's update score amount, amounts the parameter, and then every time you call update score, it's one, it's pointless to have a parameter. So you have to call it again somewhere else with a different number so the parameter is worthwhile. Otherwise, it's a waste of time. Okay. Uh, explain how the selected uh, abstraction manages complexity. So how do we do that? Um, the, the explanation does not apply to the selected abstraction. So like you're saying this manages complexity, but you're talking about the wrong thing. Or the abstraction is not explicitly identified. All right. And that's it. Um, I just wanted to mention here where they talk about the rectangle and all that and the oval. That's only for the for the part three where you're casing the whole code. So remember, you in part two C and part two D, you're actually pasting in your algorithm and your abstraction. You don't need ovals and rectangles for part two and part part two C and part two D. But on part three, when you're showing your whole code, that's where you need the oval and rectangle that you do in code print. Okay, if you have questions, please call it back at your boy. I'm, that's me, okay? That was a long video, there you go though.